Hello, hello, and welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion today. This is the place where creators connect to inspire, share their ideas and stories in hopes of changing the world through raw and unedited talk. And today I am joined by one of the most talented Young men, I know. Oh my God. Look, his face looked real funny when I said young men. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh, and he's he's rather humorous. He doesn't know he's rather humorous, but I laugh every time I talk to Jim. <laughs> but this is Mr. Jim Hawkins. And he is a, oh my gosh, all around sound engineer, producer, all of that stuff. We're going to talk about it. But um, Jim, I have to tell the connecting point. Okay. So this connecting point comes in different arenas here. So let me go back. For the first connecting point uh, I must mention is Mr. Hawkins. Um, I met him through my mother, actually. My mother, Rosa Thurman, um, he recorded her first gospel album in Athens, Georgia, at the historical Morton Theater. And then after that, um, my son, when he got to middle school, I, God actually told me to call Jim and ask him to mentor my son uh, because I knew he was headed down the path of producing. And Jim said, well, okay. However, it didn't happen until he got to high school, right, Jim? Was it around high school? Yeah. Well, the yeah, part. It was really about the time he, he got to you, um, or maybe it was when he was in senior in high school or something. Yeah, yeah. Dude coming to UGA, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even though I asked Jim early on, it didn't really take place uh, until he, my son was in high school, like Jim said, around senior year, transitioning into college. And he opened his doors to my son and um, shared his expertise with him. And it's history after that. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the connecting point. Jim, welcome to the connecting point. Thank you, Marcy. Please be <laughs> here. Appreciate your, your uh including me in this, yes. No, I, I mean, you've been on my mind for this for quite some time, but you know, your your resume is so vast. <laughs> I was trying to it's figure out how am I gonna- long anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it is an audience. He has done so many things that he, um, he really doesn't talk about. This is a very humble young, I, you are a young man. I'm just going to call you, it. Thank you. You can, you, can, you can keep up with it. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> he is truly an humble um, heart and a dear heart, um, just a giving individual. And so we're going to delve into this, this conversation. The first thing I want you to do is tell the audience where you're from and where you are now. Well, I'm from Athens, Georgia, and that's where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all he is so from. <laughs> He's from Athens, Georgia, and that's where he is now. I, I grew I grew up here. Uh, actually, uh, I grew up out in Oglethorpe County. I, mm -hmm. out in, I'm a country boy, farm boy. And uh, I grew up out there. I live in town now. Uh, but I traveled a lot, you know, and I lived four years down in Macon, Georgia. And, and I, I basically had three careers, Mar Marcy. Uh, I, I started out as a musician, really. That was, mm -hmm. that was the first, first phase of my, my career. Uh, and that <clears throat> led me into, um, uh, situation to become a recording engineer mm -hmm. um i i worked with uh, a company down in macon that I, actually i was working with otis redding and and mm -hmm. and the company that he 
was part of. And, <clears throat> and we were planning to build a studio for him. And, uh, um, and I had met Otis through being a musician. Mm. Uh, had the good fortune to be, be part of his band once upon a time. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, but, um, all right, so, so we built this studio in Macon that we called the Otis Redding Memorial Studio when we opened it. Uh, not too long thereafter, it became known as the Capricorn Recording Studio. And I worked there for about four years and uh, I built the studio and I, I was the chief engineer and, and uh, engineered a lot, of, a lot of good records down there. Uh, and I was fortunate to get to work with some really good people. You know, they people buy a record, they they buy it to hear the performance on it. They they yeah. not go to buy a bad performance just because it's well recorded. <laughs> so so uh, I was fortunate to work with with uh, some really good artists. Um, and then you know we can go back and elaborate on it, whatever you want to, but. Uh, then I left the recording studio and started working in the film business, mm -hmm. uh, recording sound for films. And it's not quite that cut and dried. I, you know, I, there was some overlap there. I was trying to be an independent record producer for a while, but I was making a living doing movies and before long I decided I was having a pretty good time doing movies and I <laughs> wouldn't really worry about the rest of it much anymore but um uh, you know and then the movies I I went all over everywhere doing those things so uh, um I never moved to Los Angeles but I figured out one time that if I just took the time I was working out there I'd I'd spent more than two years there wow and, I, I did I did get a Christmas card from the, <laughs> from the motel that I used. <laughs> but um, but you know Jim I never I never saw you um I guess when I came into the picture of, of mm -hmm. knowing who you were were I never knew you were a musician first yeah what was your instrument was it piano yeah, it was uh -huh. good. I, yeah. I, I had played some guitar also back back in high school and all, but but I I took piano lessons and I hated them. And my for my twelfth birthday, my parents gave me a guitar and let me quit taking piano lessons. Mm -hmm. And then I learned how songs work. And then I went back to the piano and, and enjoyed mm -hmm. the piano from that point. So. So, uh, well, let me, since we're talking about that, I really want to start there because this show is about creators and a lot of people uh, who are creators sometimes find it hard to discover what it is they should be doing, what their gift is, what their talent is as a young child. Um, they may have started one way and moved into something else and like you had to go back. Can you tell the audience how how did you even start playing with it? Was it your parents that started you on in piano or you desired to do it? Oh, piano lessons. Let's see. I started piano lessons in the second grade. And uh, I don't know, we had a piano at home and and you know, I, I guess I'm old enough that that uh um, uh, most of the older people around, I'll say most of them, but, but my mother, my grandmother, all, you know, I mean, just a lot of people played piano. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I mean, before, before the radio, if you had music in your house, that was probably how a you piano. had, you, know, you had mm -hmm. a piano and Somebody had to know how to work the thing. <laughs> but, you know, that is so uh, true because I remember when I was a little girl, um, that's one instrument that was in my grandparents' home, mm -hmm. a piano in my in my father's uh, parents' home. Um, and there was, it was in this one room 
That was the sitting room. Mm -hmm. And not many people, you couldn't go in there and just sit like we do now watching TV. That was a very special room. Uh, <laughs> At our house, you didn't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> and the couch was always neat and nice. That's right. Very yeah. nice. You didn't go in, you didn't go in, the we called it the living room in our house. But, uh, yeah, but you could go in there to play the piano. You kept, you kept yeah, but our piano was in a different room. But, mm -hmm. but, the, but the living room, mom kept that ready in case company comes and uh -huh. closed and you don't be messing around in the living room unless you got some good business. And, you know, and I really don't remember, we, we didn't bang on, you know, like you have children now, they'll go to an instrument and start banging. We didn't yeah. do that. It was a instrument that we took care of in that you home, you yeah. know, and, and you had, I had to have formal piano lessons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, um, like you, I, took piano and I really, I wanted to at first, but then it started invading on my weekends. Oh. <laughs> my time when all the, <laughs> my friends were doing other things and I started not liking it as much, but I, I stayed with it um, until I think my latter part of high school, but I started like you around eight or nine years old. Um, playing piano. And now that I look back on it, piano is that basic instrument. So I tell parents, if you want your children to branch off into music, or if they want to start with that basic instrument, because once you learn about it, you can transfer it to other instruments. So uh, I thought what you said was very interesting because I had a similar <laughs> experience with piano. <laughs> but I am thankful that my parents um, did put me in piano because I, I fall back on that now. I use what I've learned from years ago, even though I didn't like it at, toward the latter part. I needed it for where I am now. Well, you know, even though I, I didn't, I, I'm a terrible sight reader. I don't, I don't sight read. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I can read the whatever. I don't. Let's just say I don't sight read. Um, I'm like you. I'm the same way. <laughs> but but um, uh, you know, I I'll credit my piano lessons with teaching me po hand posture and finger, you know, fingering and things like that 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 I probably wouldn't have learned if I'd just been listening mm -hmm. to records or something. You know. But that is, you know, that that goes to show you, audience. You might not like what you're doing, but I it helps somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it helps yeah. somewhere. Um, and so let's let's talk a little bit about now you moving well, into. Okay. okay you well, say well, I I I think I know where you're headed here, and mm -hmm. and so there's a point I kind of want to make. Okay. Is that um, okay? When I was a musician, yes, I was. I was, a, I, what I want to say is, is that basically my career has not been so much being the creator, but being the enabler of creators. Mm. Um, I, I, and, and even when, when I had the band, well, the, there was, there was a time when I was singing and I was all this and stuff, you know, but because we were playing every, it, it interfered with my weekends too, but that was wonderful because that was my mm -hmm. work. You know, that was, mm -hmm. that was what I did for eight years. That was how I made a living. And, um, and, and we, you know, hopefully we work every weekend, but, um, you know, and, and then we, we got a real singer, you know, and, and so we were, we were in support of that singer. Mm -hmm. And then when I built the studio, I was trying to record, make a good recording for this artist, you know, or, or the one next week. Or the, and, and, and then uh, later on in the movies, the same thing, you know, you're, you're trying to, trying to make, a good recording and be 
and interfere with the artist with the artist process as little as you can. I mean, if mm -hmm. I used to say, if I do my job perfectly, it will go unnoticed. You know, so. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but yeah, that you know. So it's and and of course I still like you know I still have my creative projects. Um, uh -huh. The project I did with your mother was certainly one of those. And, uh, and more recently, I've had a, a radio show on our public radio station here in Athens mm -hmm. called Music on the Boulevard. Okay. That, uh, uh, performances that, that we recorded at our studio and, and uh, in front of a live audience. And, and uh, Now, you know what? That music, this is the point I really want to make. Yeah. Even though piano was short lived, well, I it still had have a piano. Impact. I still have a piano. <laughs> but you had you. Do you play it? Do you yeah, play it? Yeah, I played it last night. <laughs> okay. Well, listen. There we go. You that music had some impact on your entire career. You knowing about it, you list being able to hear the sounds let you know what sounds are uh, working together well uh, so that you can help other artists. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I still, I mean, it, there's, it's a great uh, uh, release of tension. You know, it, it does for me what maybe alcohol or something does for uh -huh. a lot of people. I just go in there and get away you know and it, it goes all the way back to high school i don't know how mm -hmm. my parents survived me in high school <laughs> I, I would get off the bus and play that thing till they called me for supper and then i'd play it till they made me go to bed <laughs> because they wanted to go to bed but but i you know i can uh, I, I just i, I can un unwind and and mm -hmm. and uh, relieve a lot of tensions or stress that way um Today's not, you know, I, I, I tell a lot of people I hadn't learned a new, a new song since Otis died, but, oh. but, um, I, you know, I might, uh, just sit there with, you know, I'll play some of the old songs again, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I'll play with the chord progressions and think about a different way to get from this chord to that chord or, or something, you know, and, and, uh, you know, or, or maybe I've just come into some new insight into into some chord 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 voicings and, and stuff like that interests me a lot these days. So it's therapeutic for you. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I want to go from there now to sound engineering. This is <laughs> this is what what I really know about. <laughs> about you um and i remember meeting you for the first time and like you say it was during my mother's gospel recording and i thought that project was so profound um because it brought athens in this historical space no one had ever uh asked my mother to do anything like that and i doubted she would have done it if you had not approached her to do it um uh evening of praise and i will never forget um being a part of it myself being able to just um be on the stage and look into an audience filled with people and then hearing this product that you uh engineered come out of that whole event how did you feel about that <laughs> well, i was quite pleased with the way it came out yeah 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 i uh yeah, but that's but that's what mother, I remember. Your mother's a great singer. She's talented, talented yeah. singer. And, she uh, is. Uh, <clears throat> I, you know, it, it and it was a it was a it was you know one of those good things. One of your projects. <laughs> <laughs> one so. of your creative projects, one and even projects. you've like you said you've gotten a chance to work with many artists like Otis Redding. Uh, how was that experience? You know, I, I've often wondered. I said, I wonder how Jim felt in the room with Otis Ready. <laughs> oh my goodness, that voice! <laughs> yeah, well, you know, 
Uh, I think this is something that I learned young was that, you know, it, for me, it was, it was, um, something that I, you know, I, these great artists that I, that I, uh, love them, you know, I grew up listening to their music and, and loving their music and, and, uh, and then actually getting to work with them, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, I don't know, you call it validation or something, maybe, uh -huh. but, uh, uh, you know, and there were a lot of artists. I mean, it wasn't just Otis. It was probably a lot of others. More yeah, I, you're, the but, list goes on and on. You, look, but, I, but, I don't want to name them all. <laughs> no, but, well, we don't need to name them. But the, <laughs> the, the thing is, is just that, that you realize that we're all doing the same thing. They they do a really good job of, you know, mm -hmm. and and if if you can provide the the musical accompaniment or the the uh, recording expertise or or whatever uh, to support what they're doing and and make help the, you're just trying to help them them realize mm -hmm. their their idea you know mm -hmm. and and i want to ask you over the years what transitions have you seen in music um that have been very very impactful on society today that wasn't there when you started well um I grew up on rhythm and blues music. That, mm -hmm. is, that was my thing. And, and that might be a little unusual for somebody of my complexion, but oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, my band was a mixed band and, and, uh, and this is something that, that never even crossed my mind, but, but our our man our our booking agent who was Otis's manager, he, you know, he'd been out to hear. He came to hear us play multiple times. But but he had been to hear us play one night, and and his wife had remarked to him, "What a diverse group of musicians we were." And this, this had never entered my mind because it was all about the music to us, music, you yeah. know, and, and we were, we were just the best drummer or the best, best, uh, saxophone player or guitar player or whatever. But, but she had pointed out that we came from a variety of, not only were we racially diverse, uh, but we, and we had we had a black drummer, we had a black singer, um, we had a Jewish saxophone player, we had uh, um, three or four white boys from various uh, economic and mm -hmm. social circumstances. You know, I mean, but the music brought us all together. Yeah, Ooh, that's and powerful. We, we, you know, and, and the music is powerful, and and you know, we were like a family, and and uh, you know, I always said it was like an eight-way marriage. You know, it's just wow. You know, it's impossible to <laughs> manage all this. Keep everybody yeah. happy. If you can keep two or three of them happy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, you know, but the the thing, you know, when when you got out there on the stage and did what what you did, you know, it, it sort of transcended the, I mean, there's just, you know, really a spiritual dimension to it all. Yeah. Music yeah. helps you reach this euphoria. Yeah. You know, that really, it, and it's, it's unique to every individual what it does for you, but it does get you to that point of that Jim is talking about, this elevation. You know it's spiritual you know it has to be because of what it does. You know, even in the classroom, I can see uh, uh, children that have special needs up to the highest uh, level of um, IQ 
in the classroom and it brings everybody on one accord, but it's doing something different in each one of them. And, and that's what's so amazing about music period. But anyway, <laughs> I was supposed to be moving to the sound engineering. Well, well so, so I, I guess while well, we were talking about changes in the music, Okay, and, and so I was I was saying that that I started out, you know, R and B was the music that that I played and that I that I loved. Uh, R and B music, I mean, you know, and and this is the early and mid sixties. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got it, you know. That's that was a whole other time frame, and uh, but that music changed abruptly. Mm -hmm. uh, when Otis died and Martin Luther King died a few months later um, Otis died in December and, and uh, Martin Luther King died in April and, and uh, things were just never the same again you know mm. and and uh, and I you know and I went to build this studio uh and you know it was already planned they'd already bought a building um mm -hmm. we didn't use that building ultimately but um uh, um i had expected to record r&b music you know i mean that that we were pretty much an r&b organization we had you know gosh we had sam and dave and percy sledge and Arthur Conley and uh, uh, it, uh, Phil Phil's booking agency was the largest R and B booking agency outside of Motown, mm -hmm. and Motown wasn't really R and B anyway. Motown was kind of pop music by mm -hmm. black performers. Yes, and and uh, I mean it didn't have the soul that Memphis did. You know? <laughs> Jim said, "Didn't have the soul." <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, you know, you're going to get some arguments on that one. <laughs> well, <laughs> of course, you're going to get some arguments, but that's how I feel about it. But uh, uh, so that was a, a, you know, a changing point in music. Uh, so you know, at that point, I quit. I didn't really see myself. I knew better piano players than me anyway, you know, and, and um, <clears throat> I had my hands full being an engineer. So I, I really didn't play much after that. And most of the musicians that I worked with down there don't even know I was a musician. You know, they just <laughs> regard me as an Like me, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so, um, you know, and, and then we sort of, I wasn't expecting it. It came out of nowhere. But here comes this whole new genre of music that, that, for lack of a better term, is called Southern Rock. And I don't call the Allman Brothers a Southern Rock band. The mm -hmm. Allman Brothers come closer to being a jazz band than anything else mm -hmm. I can think of. But, um, um, you know, it was a whole new musical direction. But it was an artist. I, I mean... I mean, there's a there's a lot of common points between Dwayne Allman and Otis Redding. I mean, they it was just sort of a uh, they had these personalities that that just you know, besides being the master of their craft, they they just had the the energy and the confidence and the spirit to. To do it <laughs> yeah and and so that was a changing point in music um you know a, an additional thing that happened when i worked in the studio i felt like i i came to appreciate any i could i could appreciate any kind of music as long as it was well done right and uh and i really got i had never worked that much with acoustic instruments before but i really came to enjoy recording acoustic instruments um, 
Oh, and I love hearing a coo- it's something about yeah. acoustical instruments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got sold too. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, those are changes in, in the music and, and so forth. Uh, and then, I don't know, music, it, it's gone to places that I don't even understand <laughs> anymore. So I just mm-hmm. say, okay, well, yeah, y'all have, I'm glad for you. <laughs> you know? But you know what, uh, Jim, mm-hmm. one thing that I really like about the era of music that you started in mm-hmm. is the live instruments. Yeah, yeah. That is, and if you listen to my playlist in my car, I try, I, most of my songs that I'm listening to, that's what's there. Um, my daughter and I talk about it all the time. She says, Mama, the live instruments. She listens to our old school <laughs> because well, of that. Well, see, yeah. I love the horn section, you know. Oh, I my mean, goodness. I mean, and, and our band never had less than one saxophone at it, it, the very mm-hmm. Small. We always had one saxophone, and we never had more than one guitar, you know. And and I don't understand a stage full of guitars and all that, but um, um, but yeah, I, I love the horn section. That's that's why I love Otis's music. You know, he, he the had, horn, mm-hmm. you know, the great horn. And line. there was an era where you had this or this whole orchestral. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know. We had a group of musicians then. I mean, you know, I'm talking about folks my age and, and maybe five and six years older than me that, that well, I mean, we'd come, we'd come from the big bands, you know? I, I mean, that's what, that our parents were listening to. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then you had what they called combos and, you know, the Bill Black combo or the, or, or the, um, uh, Bill Doggett combo, let's do the honky tonk. And, and, uh, um, but, you know, that would be a small band, but it would have horns, you know, I mean, and, and, uh, you know, like Ray Charles would, he had two, two bands. He had his, his small band and then he had the full blown big band. Uh-huh. And, and I went, I went to see him once at the, uh, the old, uh, what did they call that ballpark? Ponce de Leon Park down, you know, on Ponce de Leon Avenue across from the old Sears building. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I know what you're talking about. Uh huh. I think the police department has it now or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he would do the first set with the small group and, mm-hmm. and uh, then they'd take a break and come back and have <laughs> 18 of them out there. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but I mean, James Brown had 18 musicians or, or, you know, and Otis was carrying a dozen or something, uh, 12 or 14, Joe Tex, something like that. In fact, some of these, there was one particular group of musicians that uh, uh, came from down on the Gulf Coast, uh, down there, Thibodeau, Louisiana, and, mm-hmm. and, and Homa. I, I mean, you know, there's, I, I got a friend down there right now. He's a, he, he survived the storm last week. Uh, what great. But they're down, you know, and I think you know my Thank friend Jackie, Jackie Avery. And Jackie was part of part of those people also. But uh, it was just this great group of musicians. And and they played first, first came to prominence, I guess, behind um, Joe Tex. Mm-hmm. And, and then... Next thing you know, they're playing behind Otis, and and uh, then Otis and Otis, of course, would always fire his band when he would play out in Europe or something. You know, he didn't want to keep him on payroll while he was gone. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, no, uh, that's how we got to play with him. But uh, um, um, so I, I remember when I was I was stationed at Keesler Air Force Base in my military career and um, which wasn't a long when I was fortunate to be in the Georgia Air National Guard but I was mm-hmm. stationed at Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi Mississippi for about eight or nine months and uh, uh, 
there was this great band that I heard played on the bass there at Vandenberg Hall. And uh, I got to know them pretty well. It was, the, the band was killer. The singer was okay. And uh, I later came to learn that these were Otis's musicians down there. Uh, you know? but, uh, oh my goodness. The drama was J. John. Jamo, we call him. That's how I can't call your son Jamo. But um, <laughs> yeah, because Jamar uh, says Jamo too. <laughs> <laughs> Jamo, somebody a different person than me. But um, uh, yeah, these um, you know they were great musicians, and and uh, uh, but you know look look at a. Uh, and of course, Jackie and Otis, and and there was another one. There's a saxophone player down there who was a little older than, than Jackie and Otis. Uh, his name was Don Henry. We all called him Cadillac. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's because <laughs> that's because when when Otis would play a string of gigs, he would usually fly to the next location. But he wanted his car there when he got there. So so. Cadillac would drive. And it was a Cadillac. Oh, Cadillac, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cadillac's job is to drive Cadillac. <laughs> but, but, uh, um, and, and he, Cadillac took Otis, Otis and Jackie out to, to, uh, to Los Angeles. And they, they, uh, were out there a little while. And, and then Otis had promised Zelma he was coming back because she was pregnant when he left. And and he was coming back for Bo Junior was born, and and he did, but uh, there was a a song, uh, Alley Oop. Did, did you ever hear that? I think I did. You know what? You know my father. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, you know my daddy had it all. I think I have heard that. <laughs> well. Well, that was Otis and Jackie. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the artist was the Hollywood Argyles. Well, you, that's the only record the Hollywood Argyles ever had. It was, it was, you know, it was one of these deals where somebody else owned the record and they didn't get the money. They probably didn't get paid for the session. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, but they did that while they were out there. And then they come back and, and Jackie had written these arms of mine. And and they were performing that out there, and 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 then Otis came back and and uh, went to Memphis. You know, it's, it's a well-known story about how he went to Memphis to, to uh, he he drove Johnny Jenkins' car up there so Johnny could could uh, cut a record. You know, was follow up. Johnny had had a big hit record, regional hit. You know, it was a hit as far as anybody in the South was concerned, called Love Twist. Uh, guitar instrumental guitar thing and and so he was going to memphis to record a follow-up and otis was going to drive the car if he could record one of his songs while he was up there and so they did and and uh, johnny's session didn't go all that well but so that they packing up, leaving, notice, well, wait a minute, ain't I going to get the record? You promised me I could record. And, and so uh, they did. And, and Booker T had already left. So, so on, on these arms of mine, that, those little triplets you hear on the piano, that's Steve Cropper, the great Stax guitar player, playing, mm. <laughs> playing that little simple piano part. And Johnny Jenkins playing guitar. And, uh, and there's these arms of mine. And, and uh, Steve Crop said, what made his hair stand up on his arms when he heard Otis sing, you know? And, and so it, you know. It well, you know, it, it is just um, amazing that you've had the opportunity to be in the midst of so many great people, but you're great yourself because there's another avenue you, you've traveled on and that is, sound production. And I remember one of the series that you worked on, I used to love watching and it was called I'll Fly Away. 
You remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I used, to, I used to, my, my mom and I used to sit and watch that every week. I love I'll that. I'll fly that. away. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, uh huh. That was, I mean, it was such a, it was like a, kind of like a little house on the prairie mixed with the, uh, <laughs> it, was, the it was the uh, southern, it was the southern version of Little House. On yes, the I loved watching. <laughs> I, I never wish, thought about is it. Is there like any that. way we can find that now? Is there anywhere we can, uh, is that anywhere we can locate it to watch? That's a good question. I, Every now to... and then, check on YouTube. Check on YouTube. Okay, I'm going to look for that. that I, I have that seen show. one or two episodes. You know, the thing is that that the resolution of the of the monitors and all these days is much higher resolution than it was in some. Sometimes the, these things that we shot. 20 and 30 years ago that we loved so much don't look good today on, mm -hmm. on current monitors. There's, there's another, another show that I did that, uh, uh, we did it before I fly away, but I worked with Sam Waterston on it. It was, uh, Gore Vidal's Lincoln. Mm. It, it was about president Lincoln, of course. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, but there's no, there's no, you know, it was done on, we shot it on film. They transfer it to videotape and they do all the editing, finishing on mm -hmm. videotape. And there was never a film print of it or anything that could be scanned now. But so, you also did some work with Drumline, didn't you? I did the sound for and Drumline. That, you know, that's my alma mater. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to mention that one. <laughs> yes, yes, I did the sound for Drumline. Of course, that that that's archived in my house. <laughs> yeah, I've got that on DVD. <laughs> I, I can watch that whenever I want to. <laughs> but Good. you've done so much. Do, how, when you sit back and think about all that God has allowed you to do, what what are your thoughts? I just want. I mean, it's amazing that a man of your energy level now your age, yeah. have accomplished so much. And I don't know if you want to tell your age, but you don't have to. 78 today. <laughs> yes, 78 right years old. 78 years young, I <laughs> might say. My hand. <laughs> <laughs> 78 years young. And look at all this. You What do you think about when you sit back and reflect on that? Well, if you're done all that, you got to be old. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I've enjoyed, I mean, it's been a great life. It's been a wonderful life. And, and <sighs> I hope there's some more things out there, but, but it, it's been, you know, I've, I've had a great time if it's all over soon, you know, but, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been. You had this, you had studio in Athens. Is the studio still there? I know you were. Yes, it's trying still to get there. rid of it. It, it. Well, I mean, I don't feel like trying to get rid of it. I'm trying to find the right owner. Uh, it's on the market. I, you know, I mean, I've had, I've had offers from real, you know, commercial real estate investors that that are looking at it to figure out how many student apartments they can turn it into. Oh my goodness! And there's been a doctor or two that was interested in moving their practice down there because it's close to the hospital and all this. Mm -hmm. and, but there was a lot of special work that went into making that place a recording. Studio. And it's beautiful. It, you know, when you walk in there, you see this piano. I mean, it's, uh, I, I kind of know where you, you are with that. It's your baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to find the right person. Yeah, it's, I understand. You know, so yeah, my real my realtor says I'm looking for a unicorn. So mm -hmm. <laughs> well, hey, yeah. uh huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I you have done so much, yeah, with, with the music, with the engineering, but you've also mentored so many. Have come through those studio doors and and you've opened your 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 studio up to them my son being one of them uh rem the group i know you did some work with them uga you let some students come from uga channeling through there 
So I, you know, I want to thank you personally um, for what you have been to my family and myself, and you know, because you didn't have to do that. Well, you did not have to do it, <laughs> and so uh, I just want to know what you what what do you think about? I mean, I, <laughs> you're in your glory years. <laughs> I don't know if they're glorious or not. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Oh. You you still have energy, you still moving around. You still keep me laughing when I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So you you know, that's that's something to think about. I've been fortunate. That's what I think. Yeah. And I mean, and so, one thing know, now. And and I'll say this for I, I guess I guess we've got young students that are going to mm -hmm. see this and and um, I say that being fortunate or you it, it's it's when opportunity meets preparation. That's what. It Ooh, means. my. Okay, that's and, it. And and <laughs> so I mean it, that's what luck is. It's when opportunity meets preparation. And and uh, so if you've studied your instrument, or or you've worked hard and learned to express yourself on this instrument, or or whatever, um, some point there's going to be a situation where there's an opportunity to do that. And if you've prepared for it, then you be able to step in and do it. Um, and it's the same thing with being a recording engineer. I mean, several years back, back in those days, there weren't many books about being a recording. There weren't any really. There was, there was one book that I knew of, um, called the audio cyclopedia and it, it was it was big it was thick um and it was written by a fellow in los angeles and it was mostly about recording sound for films mm -hmm. but it was about studios and acoustics and and equipment and stuff but i had bought that book you know what back when i was in college and I mean, you know, I didn't have any college courses about this. So I, I bought it independently over at specialty distributing company. Mm -hmm. and, but I'd worn that book out, you know, I, I'd read that book thoroughly. And, and I, had, I had been playing with electronics since I was, you know, eight or 10 years, taking my, my poor mama's radio. I took that thing apart and put it back together so many times. It's the one that still played. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and I got interested in, in electronics and ham radio. I, I, I was 14 years old when I got my first, my first ham radio license, you know. But I, I already knew how to use the solder and iron and, and, and stuff like this. When I, when I got to Capricorn and we needed to build a studio, you know, I'd been reading the audio encyclopedia for several, I, I had already been to, to the Air Force Electronics School down at Keesler Air Force Base, you know. So, so I was, I was. You were prepared. Prepared to do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to. Um, I know we're we're running out of time here, but it is so, you're 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 amazing. <laughs> but that's what I want to. Those are the the key phrase. This is the key phrase here. Yeah. When opportunity meets preparation yeah and so anybody out there young people older people you must be prepared to take follow, the opportunity follow your heart too you yeah. gotta follow your heart yes 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 your heart your and, heart and that's what has right. gotten you to this point because <laughs> if, if, if your heart ain't in it you, you you're not gonna do it good anyway <laughs> that's right and yeah. that that goes back to when you are operating in what you're called to do and your purpose, and you're using your form of expression to do it, you'll love it so much you won't even realize it's 
work at some point. That's you know, right. some, my right. children. If, if you if you pick the if you pick the right line of work, you'll never work a day in your life. Right. <laughs> you know, my children have to tell me. They'll say, you know, I'll come home from my regular job, and I'll start working <laughs> my other my my yeah. self my well my other jobs yeah. and uh they'll say mommy you gotta learn how to lead that i mean rest and da, da, da. but your body feels the tiredness but the the inside what's inside of you and what you love to do you just go ahead and do it you know it's it's a part of you and so if i can encourage anybody and i know i'm going to ask Mr. star hawkins to tell you what he would suggest to encourage you, I would encourage you to stick to, like you said, do what you love, prepare in it, so that when the opportunity knocks, you're able to walk through the open door. And get as much education as you can. Mm -hmm. Regarding it. That's right. That's right. Well, regarding Mr. anything, you know. That's, oh, yeah, you better. Yeah. So you don't you know, know what read. Yeah, read. Mm -hmm. yeah. Read and, and, and study what you, you're trying to do because it doesn't just fall in your lap. You have to know what you're doing. Jim, I thank <laughs> you so much for this time. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on, but I'm on a time limit. <laughs> well, we can still talk after this. <laughs> yeah, we, look, we can still talk after this, but... Yeah. Um, I just really want to thank you, and I thank God that he has given you so many. I mean, it's amazing. Y'all, I couldn't even delve into all of it. That's that's how much it is. Uh, <laughs> that is how much this man has been able to accomplish in his 78 years, and I don't know what he's going to do from 78 on. There's no he doesn't either. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be an adventure. <laughs> I know what he's going to do. He's going to continue to keep us smiling. He's going to continue to mentor and offer his, his expertise whenever people need it. I know that's what you're doing. I know that's what you're doing. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Jim, thank you again for, for blessing us with your presence and, and uh, this wonderful life story that you had today. Thank you. Thank you. And like I say every week out there, if you would like to uh, participate and be a part of this discussion on the Connecting Point, reach out to me at integrativeartscreations.com. Uh, reach out to me at drmarcysconnections.com. Reach out to me at integrativearts at att.net. Shoot me an email. Uh, on Facebook, just look up Dr. Marcy or Dr. Marcy Thurman Simmons. Uh, you know, uh, is we're on Twitter. Integrative Arts Creations, you can find a way to contact. Also, we have a special group on Facebook, the Connecting Point for Creators group. This is a place where creators, we just celebrate each other That's and get inspired. That's the place where we do that. So if you would like to join the group, just click a request to join, find us on Facebook, and we will be happy to have you. This show airs on Instagram TV. It is uh, under Dr. Marcy. Uh, it also airs on YouTube, The Connecting Point. And we now will be airing on Wednesdays as well on KBCN TV. KBCN TV on Wednesday nights. So look for that. Um, we thank you again for